We had an unfortunate loss yesterday. Gertie died, and I walked down to let the chickens out, and Gertie was laying on her side, and she couldn't control her head. Sudden death in chickens is not uncommon. Obviously, that chicken is not Gertie. That's Margo, but there were both buffs. We diagnosed Gertie with fatty liver hemorrhagic syndrome. We're gonna be talking about that in depth throughout this video, but we wanted to just let you know that this is an unfortunate accident and sometimes it can and can't be prevented. Fatty liver hemorrhagic syndrome, otherwise known as FLHS, happens in obese prone breeds. Buff Obringtons, unfortunately, are one of the more likely breeds to be obese. It is about 5% of all sudden deaths in chickens. However, I think it is grossly underdiagnosed because a lot of people don't bring their pets into the vet to have a necropsy or an animal autopsy done. And also it is a metabolic disorder that happens mainly in younger chicks that are younger hens that are in full egg production that have high energy diets. It also is really common for animals that aren't naturally foraging and or exercising, although Gertie gets lots of exercise. In a study in California, it usually, it was seen to happen April through May, but it also happens in the summer months due to heat stress, although it was a cool day when Gertie passed away. It is mostly females with a, that have a spike in estrogen levels, which is why we think it happens more in the spring and summer when the egg production goes up. Many of the, pet, the chickens are just found dead with no clinical signs. Sometimes you can see prior to this pale comb or you can see a fluffed up chicken that seems more lethargic with a decrease in egg production and not eating well. This is a little disclaimer. These next few pictures are of an actual necropsy of our chicken. So if you get squeamish around this stuff, please skip this part. So FLHS can be diagnosed via necropsy or basically an animal autopsy. It is very easy to recognize when you do your necropsy. We did wind up doing a necropsy on Gertie because with all of the communicable diseases that could be passed from chicken to chicken, I wanted to make sure this wasn't something that we had to worry about the rest of our flock catching and passing away suddenly too. One thing that you can see right away is that their comb is very pale. This is due to a sudden loss of blood. The second thing you can see when you open up your chicken is lots of yellow fat surrounding the liver. The liver is very pale and very friable, which means when you go to touch it, it almost basically breaks up part in your hands, which isn't normal. I did include a normal picture of a normal colored liver so you can see the difference if you decide to do a necropsy on your chicken. You may also see hemorrhages in the liver as well as blood in the abdomen and you can also see a very large blood clot um, right by the liver. Don't know how to do or have never performed a necropsy? That's okay. If you actually YouTube necropsy on a chicken, there are many awesome videos that walk you right through it and they'll show you what's normal so you can pick out the things that are abnormal. So the next question is, is there a way to prevent it? Sometimes it happens even with the best practices. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you're feeding only 10% treats, especially scratch and corn or things high in carbohydrates. Make sure that their food is a well-balanced diet that has all the nutrients and minerals in it that they need. You can also replace your corn scratch with wheat or barley, which is a practice that we're now doing to try to save our next buff. You can add a felfa meal, which may reduce the occurrence of FLHS. And if needed, you can add selenium to the diet with at least 0.3 parts per million and also up to 100 IUs of vitamin E. So a few medications that you can get and have on hand um, is a product called Rooster Booster. Basically, it has vitamin B12 and vitamin K. Vitamin B12 is important for organ function and red blood cell production, and it increases their energy. Vitamin K is used for clotting. 
You can also do the Nutri Drench, which I'm going to show some videos of how to give this to your chickens, which isn't an easy feat. Nutri Drench has vitamin E in it, which protects cell damage, L lysine, and methionine, which are amino acids that help with antibodies and cell metabolism. It also helps with hormones and stress, and chlorine, which is a nutrient, a choline, that is a nutrient that you can find in fruits, nuts, beans, and vegetables. So some of the things that you can give these guys to try to help prevent this or treat it if they actually have it, we have something called NutriDrench, which is full of vitamins and minerals. Actually, the main vitamin we're looking for is vitamin E. And when you give this, you're just gonna kind of hold the chicken, tilt their little head back. They don't necessarily always cooperate. And just slowly stick a little in there. Just want to go real slow make sure they're doing that little beak movement because you don't want it going down their trachea it's going to get everywhere and that's okay that means she's drinking it you can also add this to their water if you're really having difficulty getting them to take it but a lot of times after they taste it they do actually okay with it. They just want to make sure you're not hurting them. Okay, so for the Nutra Drench, it's one mil per three pounds. We haven't weighed her very much lately, but um, we just gave her one mil. She's not showing signs of this syndrome. However, um, what one buff does, the other buff will do. The other thing you can do to try to help prevent this is make sure they have plenty of selenium in their diet. Now selenium can be in their diet and just make sure it's on listed on their bag um, as far as their food, but you can also supplement with a little bit if you're concerned about it. Now you actually for selenium will do goat gel. You can see some of the seleniums coming out here. Um, and you can actually just put just a tiny bit of it right in their mouths, which is not an easy feat. And I'll, honestly, it's really hard to measure this stuff out, so usually I just do a tiny little bit. Reason why I'm wearing gloves is this is really easily warmed up and it can get into your, it can get into your skin and get absorbed, which isn't gonna hurt you. However, then you can't get it into your chickens. And that's it. The other thing we're gonna give her in a little bit is some vitamin B12 and vitamin K. Sometimes FLHS can happen despite having the most cared for chickens in the world.